Welcome to this short video on uh, CASES that talks about optimizations that uh, programmers or software writers can do to improve uh, the application performance. In this slide, I am uh, showing uh, a plot which is also known as the memory mountain. Uh, so in one of the axes, I am showing the CAS size which is in bytes. So you can read it as 32 kilobytes and this would be 128 megabytes and another access throws the throughput which which eventually affects our execution time higher the better and then uh, what this experiment or the plot shows is the effect of uh, accessing let's say an array uh, with an offset in terms of uh, 8 bytes so with an offset of uh, let's say 8 bytes or 24 bytes or 40 bytes right and and uh, with the change in the offsets, change in the cache size, how the throughput is affected, right? So, so the, this is the takeaway from this plot. So if you look at a particular point, uh, let's say this point, right? The bandwidth is really high, right? Uh, and the bandwidth is really high because our application is uh, getting our hits from L1. So uh, our working set is kind of fitting into L1. So we, we are not going into the memory. But as you see, uh, if, if you start going to L2 or L3 or let's say to memory, your uh, throughput goes down, right? So eventually your execution time will also go up, right? You can also look at the effect of strides here. Uh, so uh, remember, if, if your cache uh, is having a block size of 32 bytes or 64 bytes, suddenly you will start seeing a dip uh, after uh, 32 byte or 64 byte uh, boundary where that will affect also your uh, throughput right so you can actually think about all, all this uh, various parameters or knobs uh, that that can affect your program uh, before you write your next program so that's the goal of uh, this particular uh, plot so with, with that let, let's jump to uh, a different context and, and uh, let's ask a question so we are dealing with improving uh, memory hierarchy performance and we are talking about what can be done as a programmer but as a programmer we have various programming languages that we can use right so uh, this is a slide that shows if you are writing a matrix uh, multiplication code pretty uh, simple uh, matrix multiplication code what can be the speed up over a uh, matrix multiplication code which is written on Python? Okay, so the y axis is normalized speed up, which means uh, Python uh, execution time will be normalized to one. And we will compare various things and try to see up to what extent we can improve uh, the execution time on top of the baseline Python code. Okay. So if you just change your Python code to a C code, you will get 47x. This is 47 times. Okay, it's not 47 percent. And so the, the, that's the gap between C and Python, right? Uh, and then I guess uh, you know why 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 is this gap, right? If you go one step ahead and start writing uh, multi-threaded code for your uh, matrix multiplication right uh, you'll have uh, parallel loops and multiple threads are executing it concurrently this gives you 366x right so which means if your python uh, program is actually 366 times slower right now let's move one more uh, level into optimization which is called addition of memory optimization so we'll see well, what are the different possible memory optimizations and this gives you more than 6000x okay and can you do better uh, because this number itself is insane and uh, yes you can still do uh, better with, with the usage of something called simd instructions uh, we haven't looked into it but you can actually go and have a look and uh, you can see how how you can use it in your code so that you can uh, get further improvement but at this moment you, you should guess what what should be the uh, impact if you uh, use all these optimizations so what, what should be the value or what exactly the value can you speculate right so the value is actually 62000 x okay 62000 x which is insane right so uh, compared to your python code it's 
62,000 times faster. So, which means micro architecture optimizations uh, at a programming language level, at, at a multi threading level, and then at the instruction level and at the memory hierarchy level uh, plays a big role in our uh, uh, end to end execution time, right? So, uh, Again, think about it before you write your uh, next software or next program and uh, try to find out whether you can improve its execution time. So uh, let, let's go further and uh, try to see what are the simple tricks that the software writers like compilers or programmers can do uh, to exploit uh, CAS locality, which can improve uh, the CAS iterate and eventually the performance. So let's continue with the simple matrix multiplication. I guess everyone can correlate uh, with this particular code. So uh, two loops iterating over uh, rows and columns. And then usually whatever we have learned from our uh, school days, uh, that, that's what we are doing here. And finally, we are putting the, uh, updating a particular entry in uh, another uh, array. This is, this is like a 2D array. Uh, a and uh, B, and the final 2D array is C. Okay, so as you can see, there are three for loops, and uh, the final, uh, the nested one uh, is actually accessing all these arrays and then uh, performing uh, the multiplication. Okay, so as a programmer, what can you do, right? So before that, let's look at the notion of misrate here. So, uh, what is the typical misrate? Let's assume the block size is 32 bytes. Okay. And we are dealing with uh, doubles. So doubles will uh, take around eight bytes, which means one CAS block will store uh, four array entries, right? Okay. And assume that the matrix dimension is huge, let's say in millions, uh, so so that uh, it won't fit into the CAS. And uh, final thing we have to do is we have to look at the access patterns, right? So what exactly happens when you do a matrix multiplication of uh, two uh, two D matrices. Uh, how do you actually uh, access through uh, these uh, matrices, right? So let let's start looking into it. So uh, let's start assuming, or, or uh, this is kind of obvious that each row in the matrix will be contiguous in, in terms of memory locations, right? So if you are going for let's say a zero zero, a zero one, right? So they are, they are kind of contiguous. So they are adjacent to each other. So you can actually exploit spatial locality with uh, this kind of uh, memory addressing, right? So with uh, row major ordering, if we uh, go for this particular for loop, uh, just to get an idea, you will find that uh, th this particular statement is accessing array A and uh, on each axis, it's iterating over this for loop. Right, so uh, it's actually going to A of uh, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, and 0, 3. And as our block size is of 32 bytes, that means in one go, uh, it's actually taking uh, or uh, getting 32 bytes from the memory, even though one entry of an array is actually just 8 bytes, right? That means the misrate of uh, the, this particular access or this particular uh, loop will be size of this particular array divided by the block size because you won't get a miss on every axis you'll get a miss only once you cross a block size but uh, if we go for just the opposite so instead of a zero if we go for a of i zero that means we are going to access a of one zero two zero and all so they are uh, not contiguously uh, allocated the, the accesses are actually scattered right so that means the block line that stores a of one zero is different from the block line which contains a of two zero because in terms of address they are far apart depending on the size of the array right depending on the number of rows and columns so in this case you will get a miss rate of 100 percent because each access uh, will be a miss at the gas right okay so with this example let's look at the effect of uh, loop ordering uh, in our simple matrix multiplication code so this this is the uh, conventional code that uh, you must have seen everywhere, right? Uh, you just go with the uh, first uh, matrix and the second matrix using a for loop that iterates over uh, the columns in the first matrix and the rows in the second matrix, right? 
And finally, once you are done with this for loop, you go to uh, this particular array and update uh, a particular entry in that array, right? So if we try to find out uh, the miss rate only for this uh, innermost uh, loop, you will find that for this particular array, A of IK, uh, the miss rate is 25%. Okay, that means it's hitting 75% of the time, uh, which means uh, you are actually getting uh, miss one out of four times right and that's because of the locality as we have already discussed right because when you bring a of uh, 0 0 you'll also bring a of 0 1 0 2 and 0 3 with the cast block size of 32 bytes right but if you look at uh, array b b is actually accessing something like b of uh, 0 0 and then b of 1 0 right it's iterating through the k uh, loop so every time it will miss. So miss rate is 100%. Uh, and uh, C anyway, it's not part of the innermost for loop, right? So it's not affected. So C of IJ will be there all the time uh, in, when it comes to the innermost for loop. So miss rate is zero. Now, if we just change the order a bit, right? And then uh, rearrange our code, the functionality is still the same, but let's look at what happens now. So now you will see that we have moved our array A uh, before the inner uh, for loop. So it's uh, unaffected. C of IJ will get 25% uh, miss rate again because it's exploiting locality, right? You bring uh, one entry and get three entries for free. Similarly for B, because now B is also accessing uh, exploiting special locality. For a given value of K, it's iterating over J. Right, so now it's going for G, uh, B zero 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 one and all. Right, so uh, th this particular change in uh, loop iterations has actually improved the uh, miss rate. Right, if you go for uh, one more uh, possibilities, right, and and uh, see what what's happening with the miss rate with this code, uh, you will find that this is not exploiting the locality at all. Right, so what we have done is we have moved k here right and uh, if you look at the kind of accesses that we are doing here none of them are exploiting any special locality right so so that that's why uh, eventually you get a, a miss rate of 100 percent for a and c for b anyway it's not part of the inner for loop so it's unaffected so the miss rate is zero so uh, this is kind of a summary of all the possible loops uh, ordering, loop ordering that, that are possible. And then uh, what are the misses per iterations? How many loads and stored uh, you do, right? So uh, as you can see, uh, th this particular ordering KIJ and IKJ is actually uh, pretty better. Uh, only 0.5 misses per iterations compared to 2 and 1.25, right? So a uh, few uh, Linux commands uh, that are pretty handy if you want to uh, go deep and see what exactly is happening inside your uh, laptop, desktop or whatever. Uh, go go for uh, this particular tool called Puff. So I'm assuming you are using Linux command, uh, Linux for uh, operating system. So go and search for uh, this particular uh, Puff uh, tool or the Puff command, which is actually uh, a tool that counts memory accesses and all the, the different possible uh, micro architecture accesses through performance counters. So performance counters are nothing but registers which are already there uh, uh, or they are counters which are already there in the processor. They count different different kinds of events. And uh, through this tool, you can actually get their actual values, right? If you want to understand the dynamics of your uh, laptop or processor, go and uh, try these commands. It, it will give you all the possibilities in terms of your cache size, associativity, uh, even your DRAM capacity and then all other uh, information that that may be useful as a programmer. Okay, so with that, uh, I will stop. Thank you.